Hello and welcome to Real Talk with Ram and Rob. He's Rob, I'm Ram. Today we're going to go over some LCFL topics. We're going to talk about some NFL stuff we got. Uh, we got a couple hot topics in the NFL, in the LCFL and out of the NFL that we want to talk about, we want to discuss and we want to go over here. T- today, first we're going to start it off by going over some of the this weekend's games. Out of the LCFL, uh, we're going to start it off with the Bears, uh, excuse me, the Bears and the Vikings. That game was a game that the Vikings pretty much waltzed all over the Antelope Valley Vikings. The Vikings dropped to 0-5, 70 to nothing in that game. Was out of control after the first after the first kickoff. I was there. I broadcast that game, and the Vikings were short on the offensive line. They were starting their third quarterback, but that's no excuse for getting blown away, 70 to nothing. The Bears recorded their third shutout of the year. They've shut out three opponents. They've allowed a total of 16 points in five games to average 3.8 points a game against. That is impressive. But the Vikings, ever ever since their loss to the Dolphins, well, ever since their loss to the Long Beach Lions, that was in week two, they seem to be a lost team looking for their soul. And right now they haven't found it. They've lost three more since then, and they've dropped to the bottom of the league. Well, I'm going to tell you, this is a team, the Antelope Valley Vikings, that has just been in disarray all season long. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you two things for the Antelope Valley Vikings: Darnell Clay, Mr. RTSN himself, and Leroy Johnson. Those are the only only two guys on that team that have come up to play, that have been consistent all season long. That has been the only consistency on that team this entire season. You look at the roster, you look at the depth on the Antelope Valley Vikings. Not a lot of depth on that team. Tw- about 28, 32 players on that team, and it's it's hurt them all season long. The National City Bears, they're, they look to be um, firing on all cylinders right now. Yeah, I spoke to I spoke to Darnell after the game, and he put it eloquently. He said, there's no excuse, but we didn't play well, and this game, there's no positives to come out of this game. And I agree with him. There was no positives to come out, nothing to look forward to. The Vikings are going into their bye week right now, and they really have a lot to think about because they're going to be facing another winless team if they want to finally get out of that sad sack of losing that they've been in, they got to find a way to pull themselves together and get one. Well, the Antelope Valley Vikings are heading into a bye next week, and they need to get things together. They need to get on the right track if they're going to want to uh, pick up a victory here anytime soon. Uh, they, they go to 0-5. The National City Bears go to 4-1 and on the season. Um, now let's jump it over to the Inglewood Blackhawks, the defending LCFL champions, the team that I am calling in the LCFL, the number one team, but we'll get to that a little bit later. Number one team in the LCFL, and I've talked to a lot of people around the LCFL, and a lot of people disagree with me, but defending uh, LCFL champions, they're undefeated, 63-6 to six victory on the road, and I'm going to keep calling them the number one team until somebody can prove that they can knock off the Inglewood Blackhawks. I was making a point earlier that the Blackhawks have had home games against their tougher opponents, and away games against their much easier opponents. It seems that's the way the schedule's trending. So I'm really interested in seeing how they play those teams that they barely beat, like the Cobras and the Bears, again. But right now, the Blackhawks, they they face a team like the Eagles, they whip them easily. So the Blackhawks are in very good shape to set themselves up as the number one team. But you and I know best, you and I know very well, Ramiro, that just because the team goes undefeated in the regular season, doesn't mean they're going to win in the playoffs. The Blackhawks know this very well because last year oh, they yeah. knocked off the undefeated team in the playoffs. Oh, that's absolutely right. Last year uh, in the regular season matchup between the, uh, the the Orange County Ravens, they went a perfect 13 or 10 and 0 in the regular season, and then come come playoff time, the Inglewood Blackhawks knocked them off in the second round of the playoffs. So, just because you, you said it right, just because you go undefeated in the regular season, it doesn't it doesn't mean you're going to go undefeated the entire season. So. The Inglewood Blackhawks, they're looking to go undefeated. They're looking to get that championship back. They're looking to go back-to-back for the first time and under under Coach Tony Reed. And, and right now, it looks like, I mean, right now, top of the LCFL, nobody has knocked them off yet, and they continue to put it on teams, and they continue to play defense. But their toughest uh, matchup still ahead up in this season. Inglewood Blackhawks, they, they remain undefeated. Now let's go to the – let's look at the, the game that I was at up in – uh, Vista, California. That was between the the Cobras and the Lions. I saw a lot of things out of the, out of the North County Cobras, and and honestly, I if, when we look at the power rankings in the LCFL, I know we got the Co- the Inglewood Blackhawks at number one, but honestly, I think I'm gonna have to go with the Cobras at no, at the number two spot from now on because the the Cobras after falling to zero and two, 
just what they've done the last three games, unbelievable. The, the, the led by their general, by their veteran quarterback, Jerry Garrett, he leads the LCFL in passing yards, leads the LCFL in passing touchdowns. Uh, 11 touchdowns to just three interceptions. This guy is having himself an MVP type of season. Courtney Woods in the backfield running the football. You look at the receiving core. Their receiving core is one of the best receive, receiving cores in the entire LCFL. And it's, there's you look at what they did last weekend, DeAndre Alexander, uh, Terrence Webster. Uh, the list goes on with those guys over there in, in, at North County. That I, am, I was very impressed with what I saw over there in North County this Saturday. Remember, partner, when we made our predictions last week, you said Lions take it, and I said Cobras. Watch out for that Cobras you team. You did. The Cobras are on a hot streak right now, and I'm going to make a point about them later on in the show, but them beating the Lions solidified themselves as one of the top teams. That's another topic we're going to go about about the Lions later on, but the Cobras yeah. have an established offense. They have a very stout defense, and they have momentum on their side right now. Momentum. You, you couldn't have said any better. They got all the momentum. They got a quarterback who's playing MVP type football right now, and and the team around him believes in Jerry Garrett. Not only does the team around him, but the league around the league uh, knows what Jerry Garrett's all about. This guy is a, is a veteran savvy guy. He's a class act type of quarterback, and this guy can get the job done. And on the flip side, we're talking about the North County Cobras. They're firing out there right now. They look like. They're the team to beat right now. Uh, if the Inglewood Blackhawks and the North County Cobras were to play right now, I would put my money on the North County Cobras right right now as of today. It's now, remember, it's not about what you did yesterday or what you did the week before. It's what can you do for me today. I'm going with the North County. I would go with the North County Cobras right, right now just because of what I've seen the last couple of weeks defensively. They look sound. Offensively, they look. everybody looks to be in sync and in rhythm. And on the flip side, the Long Beach Lions, they started off their season 2-1. They had their problems at the quarterback. Now the problems are starting to look a little bit deeper. Defensively, two weeks ago against the San Diego Stallions, they gave up 38 points. Last week, they gave up another 31 points. They look like they cannot stop the run. Uh, the, the pass, Jerry Garrett just pretty much dissected that defense apart all game long. Missed tackles from the linebackers. Courtney Woods getting in the second level pretty much all game long. Uh, there was a couple of, of bright spots on that defense, Ty Tyrell Lewis had himself a decent game at the cornerback position. Uh, Michael Spicer had himself a first big game, and and Jerome Saxon a first big game with the with the Lions, both uh, having six tackles alone. But a lot, there's a lot of problems, and that's something we're going to talk about a little bit later on in the show about the Long Beach Lions. Let's uh, jump it over to the San Diego Stallions and the California Dolphins. The Stallions. 34 to 20, they they just edged the Dolphins out there. Stallions, if the playoffs began today, they'd be on the outside looking in. So they needed this win. They had to go into a place to play the Dolphins. The Dolphins are in total disarray right now. Ever since their big blowout loss to the Blackhawks, they have not been able to put things together. They got kicked out of their own stadium. They can't they can't run the ball efficiently. They they don't play defense like they should. They're just not doing anything the right way right now, and the Stallions took advantage of that. The Dolphins have one lone win, and that came against the Vikings in Animal Valley, and the Vikings' depth, obviously, we know their depth is very bad right now. So that may be their one win of the season, unless they get lucky against the Eagles, maybe. But that's another thing. The, the Stallions, they've had so many opportunities to win other games this year, fall apart at the end. So good to see them get a win here and lock it up and not blow it at the end. Yeah, I mean, talk to... Ray over there with the, with, uh, the uh, San Diego Stallions. Brian Newman was in the game the entire game. He did have the two turnovers, but he accounted for two touchdowns in that game. And, and this guy is just a playmaker. And that offense is just a, a different team when Brandon Newman is the is the leader at the controls for that offense. Because without Brandon Newman, we've seen that that offense not muster much, not pick up first downs, and that team just looks a lot different with Brandon Newman under center. Without a doubt, Brian Newman provides such a great spark to that team. He's a, he's the main reason why they float and why they're even in contention to begin with. But then you look at defensively for for the San Diego Stallions. Everybody talks about Eddie Hunter as one of the top defensive backs in the entire LCFL out of the Blackhawks. Um, Cash tone. They talk a lot, a lot about other guys uh, around the league as Thio Lewis, Thyron Lewis. 
as some of the top uh, cornerbacks, uh, Spider-Man over there with the Bears, they talk about these guys as the top, uh, top defenders. There's one guy that nobody talks about, and that's George Mosley of the San Diego Sands. This guy does so much for this team. He's a punt returner. He's a, he's a, a cornerback that can cover. He has recovery speed. This guy is a tremendous athlete at the defensive spot, and, and that's one guy that does not get his name called a lot. Without a doubt, he doesn't get his name called as much because right now the Stallions are kind of hovering beneath the surface. No one's really paying attention to them. They've gotten knocked around by the bigger teams, and they beat up on the lesser teams. So the Stallions are not really going to get much notice until they start racking up wins against the contending teams. Yeah, well, I talked, you know, I had an opportunity a couple of weeks ago to talk to Coach Limbrick after the game, and he said, hey, come playoff time. Not a lot of teams are going to want to face the San Diego Seahawks because of what they do. And George Mosley, this is a guy that he, he can hit you in the mouth, and he's going he's gonna to stick in your head. But the last game that was played, uh, those actually was the last games. We're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be right back here after a quick break. Uh, we're going to come back. Can anybody stop the Inglewood Blackhawks? Um, are the Bears' defense for real? The Lions falling apart here in the LCFL? And the Vikings, do they have a chance to pick up a victory here in 2011? We'll be right back. Yeah, they go minutes. play action, gonna air it out. This side has a receiver, and that is caught, juggled, and caught for a touchdown. Right now, we're seeing a good combination of run and pass from both of these teams. Single back formation once again for the uh, Steelers. Handoff here up the left-hand side. Spin move there, gets past the tackler. Now he's gonna go up the left-hand side, gets past another one, and he has a lot of green in front of him and a couple of blockers with him to the 25. The 20 reverses course, steps over another defender, and he is just about there. Did he get in there? He was at the one yard line. Welcome to Real Talk with Ram and Rob. He's Rob, I'm Ram. And right now we're gonna jump it into the, some of the quick topics that we're gonna start off with. Let's start off with, can anybody stop the Inglewood Blackhawks, Robert? Yes. You look at the schedule, I mentioned this earlier on the show, they have a softer schedule than anyone in the league. Their home games were against the really good teams, their away te uh, games were against the very bad teams, and you're probably going to say home and away doesn't matter, but even in the LCFL it matters, because I've called games at a lot of these sites, and the home crowds are enormous, they're very energetic, they do affect the outcome of the game, and I can guarantee you, if the Blackhawks were playing in National City against the Bears, they would not have beaten the Bears by that 10-7 score, they probably would have lost that game. If they were playing in North County with their very good fan base, Blackhawks lose that game too. Schedules turned around, Blackhawks probably have a 3-1 and one or 2-2 two and two record. I'm going to tell you what, the Blackhawks go in every game with the bullseye on their chest as a defending LCFL champions. They're the number one team in the LCFL. You talk about having the weakest record here to start the season or the weakest uh, schedule to start the season already have taken down the only two teams that I think have an opportunity to beat the Blackhawks in the LCFL. That is the National City Bears and the North County Cobras defeated both those teams already. Who else can stop the Inglewood Blackhawks? You look at what they've done here through uh, through four games, uh, 31 points a game. They only allow six points a game defensively. So right now, I don't see anybody else in the LCFL that can, maybe a Brandon Newman type of guy with the with the San Diego Seahawks, but they need to get help from somewhere else. So right now, I, I see the Blackhawks. I don't think it's too far-fetched to say that the Blackhawks are going to go undefeated. Well, let's look at their schedule. The, the Blackhawks have a schedule. They're headed to the, – they're going to play the Predators this weekend on the road. Predators are a middle – That's a victory. The Predators are a middle-of-the-road team. They, they got blown away by the Bears, so I'm going to say that's a victory too. Then they play the Steelers at home. The Steelers lost to the Bears by, by a very few margin. They, they didn't lose by much. And the Steelers have shown that they can play good defense when they're – motivated. So I think the Steelers can give the Blackhawks a run for their money. And then of course they're, they're, they're probably going to blow away the Vikings since everybody's been blowing away the Vikings. Then they're, they're headed to San Diego to take on the Stallions. Like you were saying, Brandon Newman has the best shot at beating them. If he can round the troops together, they can play perfect defensive game, execute a game plan, the Stallions have a chance of pulling the upset. And then and going back to what you said, they have the, the one of the weakest schedules to start the season. In any sport, I don't care, basketball, football, baseball, whatever uh, level it is, minor league football, college football, NFL, high school, that's just right there, Be winning the games that you have to win, winning the games that you're supposed to win, and the Inglewood Blackhawks have done exactly that. And then you talk about the Steelers, the Steelers might have an opportunity, that might be a game, 
a, a game of the week type of game. Well, yeah, without a doubt. And then I was going to say, they're probably going to roll right over the Lions to end the year. So if the Steelers or the Stallions can't take them, then in the playoffs, if they do meet the Bears or the Cobras, watch out. Because I think the Cobras have a shot of taking them out. And so do the Bears. The Bears, I talked to three Bears after the game, including the star quarterback, and the, one of their cornerbacks, and then one of their wide receivers. And all three said the same thing. We want a shot, another shot at the Blackhawks. We know we can beat them. We played the best defense in the LCFL. We can take them out. They lost 10-7 because of a few minor mistakes. They want to make amends for that. And just like last year's Blackhawks-Ravens storyline, I think that will happen if, if they meet again. You know, everybody always says that in every sport, when somebody loses to a team, they always want to avenge their loss. And they always say, hey, we want another opportunity. The fact of the matter is, now, in order to get another chance at the number one team in the LCFL, that is the Inglewood Blackhawks, you're going to have to go through the playoffs and, and tr hopefully you face the Inglewood Blackhawks. But I guarantee you this, nobody wants to face the Inglewood Blackhawks in the playoffs because, let's, let's face it, they're the number one team in the LCFL. They're, they're, I know a lot of people say that, the, that their offensive line is this and it's that, and it, they have issues off on the offensive line. They're not the same team they were last year. That's obviously, they're, they're not the same, the same team that they were last year. Solomon Jones not having the same season they were, but there's other guys that are contributing. They have the same quarterback in Devin Hollins, leads the league in passer rating in the, in the LCFL. Um, if, if, another, if they want another opportunity, they're going to have to see him in the playoffs. I, think the, not I think the Bears disagree with you. I think they want to play well, the yeah, Blackhawks so gonna, badly. Of course they're going to. They're going to want to face them. And right now at the playoffs, at the end of the day, they'd be the number two seed, which would mean that they would only have to win one game to get to the Blackhawks if the Blackhawks get past their first round opponent, which we don't even know is a guarantee because we've all heard of first round upsets in the past. I guarantee you this. On camera, they will say they want to face them again. But deep down inside, they don't want to face the Inglewood Blackhawks. 10-7 is not much, Romero. 10-7 yeah, is, is not ten, much. 10-7, but there was how many drop balls that they – and, and Several. all I hear is, well, we should have won that game. The National City Bears should have won that game. They had drop balls. No ifs, ands, or buts, buts in sports. The fact of the matter is, at the end of the day, the Blackhawks won that game 10-7. And they're going to get another shot. The Bears, I guarantee you. If they and get they're another gonna, shot. And they're going to beat them. If they get another shot, we'll, we'll be there to cover that we'll game. We'll be there. We'll be there. But I'll tell you what, 10-7. End of the day, National City lost, and everybody says that look at look at every, a, look at the NFL as example. The Ravens Steelers Steelers always beat the Ravens by three. Just this past weekend, the Ravens just blew them away. It happens in sports. It does. That's they true. get another. They get second chances, and then they avenge it. That's. I mean, that's. You're absolutely right, but that is irrelevant here. When we're talking about the Blackhawks and National City Bears, the, the Blackhawks beat them. The Blackhawks are undefeated. The National City Bears are four one. Not discrediting discrediting anything that the National City Bears have done because they are a dominant team. I just, when we talk about the two teams, I think the Inglewood Blackhawks are a better all-around team than the National City Bears are. Now, with that said, the National City Bears defense, are they for real? They are for real. I, I, They've shut out their first two opponents who we could say were weak sauce. They were the weaker opponents of the league. But then And then they, of course, shut out the Vikings. But then they held the Steelers to eight points. I mean, you hold the Steelers to eight points. The Steelers are they're a middle-of-the-road offense. You hold them to eight points, you got something going with that defense. They've given up an average of 3.8 points a game. Their, own, their highest points given up was 10. That was to the Blackhawks. That's why I was saying earlier they want that next shot because their defense... Remember how I always talk about how a quarterback has three to six seconds to throw. The Bears give you one second to throw. You don't have the ball... And I was there watching the game. I was covering it. They give, they literally gave the Vikings one to two seconds to throw the ball. Ball wasn't gone. It's a sack. The Bears there's, had there's one guy. Sacks. There's one guy in minor league football that I've seen give a quarterback one second to throw the ball, and that is uh, Congo from the Compton Panthers. Nobody else have I seen. The Bears that. defense was that ferocious. I, I don't. This past I don't week. think. I, I think you're over exaggerating when you say one second. I know the Bears have a, a good defense. They give up three points per game. But something's got to give. All it takes is, is an offensive coordinator to game, plan, to game plan against what they do. Yeah, and the Blackhawks couldn't do it. They yeah. only scored 10 points in that one game. You're absolutely right. But that was early in the season against the Blackhawks. That team wasn't meshing as it is now. I talked to Devin Hollins. He said, hey, our team, we're firing on all cylinders right now. Everybody, So are the Bears. So they are. But I haven't seen anything. I've seen the Inglewood Blackhawks score points. I've seen the Inglewood Blackhawks whole team I, and and we've seen the the uh, National City Bears hold hold teams 
to you, what are you talking about? Three shutouts? Three shutouts. Th that's right. But what can they do offensively against a good team? Seven points they put up against the Inglewood Blackhawks. Seven points. But like you said, meshing. And right now the Bears are meshing as well. They've scored 70 in their last game. They scored 19 the week before. They're starting to match together. If they can get 20 points against the Blackhawks, they'll be fine. I think 20 points is all they need to beat the Blackhawks. 20 points is a lot to ask for against a team that only gives up six points I think per game, and they, they got weapons over there. I mean, you look at the corner, you look at the defensive backs for the Inglewood Blackhawks, arguably the top secondary in the LC, in the LCFL. And I mean, the, the National City Bears. Don't get me wrong; you, they they you, have a very good. You, you uh, look at Zach James, the wide receiver of the National City Bears. He went up and caught a spectacular catch against the Vikings. He literally went up and took it out of the Vikings defender's hands. If he can do that against the Vikings, I have faith he can do it against. Not not discrediting the Blackhawks. I know the Vikings are much not as good as the Blackhawks are, but just to be able to pull off that athletic play that he did against the Vikings, I could see it happening against the Blackhawks. The, let me tell you something. The most talented receiving core in the entire LCFL is, is the North County Cobras. The North County Cobras put together two scoring drives the entire game against the Inglewood Blackhawks. That was week one in the LCFL. Now we're at week six. We're going into week six. That team is a lot better than it was week one. So there you have it. The Lions. The Long Beach Lions. A team that started two and one. They, they lost week one to the uh, Steelers. 12 to 7, a game where they couldn't uh, get much offense going. They go, to, they rip off two consecutive wins. They go to two and one. Now they go to uh, the Cobras uh, just this past weekend, and they lost 30, 31 17. Is that team falling apart? A lot, a, a lot of uh, arguing on the sidelines. A lot of arguing after the game. Is this team falling apart right now? They are falling apart. The Lions, they're two and two right now, but they should, they should be one and three. They should have lost that game against the Vikings. They had no business winning that game, but the Vikings just fell apart. They could have easily lost this dying, so they could easily be 0-4 right now. That team has had trouble from the start. When I knew it right when they couldn't beat the Steelers. The Steelers were a team that were pretty much said, whoever wants to come today to play, plays. How do you lose to a team like that? The Steelers didn't even practice before they beat the Lions, and they somehow beat the Lions. When you lose to a team that doesn't even practice, that's when you know you're in trouble, and that was week one. Practice? They didn't even practice. Talking about practice? We didn't know. They didn't practice. You got to practice if you're going to do something. It's and the a... Lions could not beat the Steelers. That's when I knew they had issues going on. Listen. So they're falling apart. They're going to go down. Now. They mean if they'll probably beat, what, the Eagles? That's probably the only team they're going to beat, and the Dolphins maybe. The I'll, rest tell, of the year. I'll tell you what. I've, I've watched the Long Beach Lions closely this entire season. I've covered all their, all their games except that first game against uh, the Steelers. That team has ballers up and down the team. Uh, offensively, you talk about what they have with X, Xavier Houston, one of the one of the better slot receivers in the entire LCFL. You know, I'm gonna go hands down right now and say Xavier Houston is the best slot receiver in the entire LCFL. Look at what he's done this season. I'm not just saying that because what I I'm saying is his numbers, his receptions, the big catches he's made all season long to keep this team in the game. You talked about how that team could easily be. 0-4, uh, Xavier Houston saved them against the uh, Antelope Valley Vikings in that come-from-behind victory. Xavier Houston is the one that ignited, the, uh, ignited that offense. Keep in mind that even if the Lions do somehow manage to get past the Dolphins, which they should on a normal day, they have to contend with the top-ranked defensive Bears in two oh, weeks. Oh, yeah. And, and when you talk, in National when you talk, City. When we say, are the Lions falling apart, are they going to con – they have the talent to win in the LCFL. There's no doubt about that. But can they gel as a unit? Can they get things together? And and can they fix the main problem that's been haunting them all season long? And that is the quarterback play. Quarterback play has been very inconsistent they can't. From, from week one. Sean Higginbotham, four, uh, three interceptions, three touchdown passes. And you look at the veteran savvy Tom McDougal, he's only thrown three touchdown passes all season long. He has six interceptions all season long. And, look, I know he threw three last week. Um, and I, I just – the quarterback plays has been so inconsistent. I don't see how that offense is going to turn things around because they have off, they have weapons offensively. But we know football is a quarterback-driven sport, and that team has their issues when it comes to the quarterback play. 
three inter- uh, four total interceptions with three from McDougal on Saturday and one from Sean Higginbotham. And the thing I don't like about that game or what happened, what transpired during that course of that game is I talked to some people, I talked to some unnamed sources, people close to the situation, and they said that their quarterback, Tom McDougal, went in there injured. Why do you start an injured quarterback in a big game, in a game that can pretty much put you at the middle of the pack, put you maybe at the number two, three spot? Maybe they didn't trust him bottom. Why do you start an injured quarterback over over the young pup, Sean Hagenbotham, who showed f- flashes of brilliance? But then McDougal, it was apparent he's struggling through the course of the game, three and a half quarters, and then three minutes left in the game, they, they go to the young pup, Sean Hagenbotham, and it was too late by that time. It was already three minutes, only three minutes remaining. They were down by three scores. I don't know if I like that decision to stick with McDougal for that long and then bring in Higginbotham. But when we look at the Long Beach Lions, I think I think they're maybe they're going to be a, at best a five and five team. As I said, if they can fix their quarterback issues, they may go six and four. But at best, five and five. And that's a first round exit most likely because they probably will make the playoffs unless the Stallions steal that last spot from them. But then you'll have to contend with the Cobras. Or maybe the the Predators, whoever finishes in three, four spots. Vikings, do they have any chance of winning here in 2011? Robert, we're, let's start with you. They have one chance, and that's in two weeks against the Eagles. They can't get it done then and scratch them off the board the rest of the year because after the Eagles, they host the Predators, who, depending on what day of the week it is, they could be good Predators or the bad Predators. They're like a good twin, evil twin type of team. Then they have to go to Martin Luther King Jr. Stadium to take on the Blackhawks, which they'll most likely get blown away over there. And then they're going to host the Steelers, who are one of the another top defensive team in the league. So You know what? I, I think the Allo Valiant Vikings, I think they're going to win a game here this year. I mean, that team has a lot of heart when you talk about Darnell Clay. They, Mr. They should Mr. be, they should be two and three right now. Should Possibly should. three and two, but they can't close out games. Could have, should Fourth have, quarter have. is their weakness. And even in the, it, they could have closed out those games, they would have been much more confident in those games against the tougher opponents. But their confidence got shot. They got to the game late this past weekend. They didn't have much time to warm up, and then the Bears were just too much for them. I mean, you look at Guys they, like, they, sorry to cut you off. They didn't even start Brandon Mim. They didn't start. Well, I don't even know if Brandon Mims is even on that team. I don't think anymore. he's on the team anymore. They don't have that team is a team. Lance DeBean was not there this past weekend. That's a team that does not have a quarterback. They haven't had a quarterback, uh, a regular quarterback all season long. They went with uh, a, a, a receiver, a guy that was playing receiver at quarterback. They had Brandon Mims at quarterback. They've had, this is a team that's played four quarterbacks this season. Uh, Darnell Clay, you've got to give this guy. Uh, you got to give this guy props. That guy's a beast. Well, Darnell, I always give him props. I mean, he knows exactly what it's like to play quarterback now. I saw one of his posts, and he's like, I know what it's like to be a play well, quarterback now. Uh, you got to give it out. That guy has heart. Uh, second half, he was stuck in there. To, they stuck him in there, the Wolves, pretty much. And yeah, I had a couple of words with Darnell Clay. He said, I got beat up in that game, and it was the longest football game of my entire football career. Uh just could not get anything going. They had Darnell Clay at, at quarterback. This is a guy that plays wide receiver. Yeah. And and then Leroy Johnson. Those two guys are the two consistencies of that football team. But I think they will by the end of this, by come season's end. I think they will pick up a victory. And and, and I think they'll go maybe a one and nine, two and eight at best. Uh, I see that happening. Yeah. They they play the Eagles at home. That's a te- that's a game they should win because the Eagles have not been close in any of their three games so far this year. That's going to wrap it up for us here on Real Talk with Ram and Rob. He's Rob. I'm Ram. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and feel free to email us. Uh, Romero at realtalksn.com. Robert H. at realtalksn.com. Or you can also email us at info at realtalksn.com. Don't forget to visit our website, realtalksn.com, of course. Or check us out on Facebook, Real Talk Sports Network, or Twitter at realtalksn. You cannot get enough of Real Talk Sports Network. For Rob, I'm Ram. Thank you much. Thank you guys for joining us here tonight. Hope you guys have a good night.